review problem number nine. We're going to look at a man who falls by uh, some distance. I guess he jumps out of a window on the problem and lands on the ground and in the process of landing does not flex his knees or bend his knees or flex his legs or anything. Just lands completely uh, stiff-legged on the ground. That's not a good idea because the force uh, on his legs is going to be so great that he's going to break some bones. So here's the situation. We're given a man of mass M. He jumps from some initial height H. As we'll see in the problem that this height doesn't have to be too, too high to cause a lot of injury, I think. In the numbers I was given in my example, there's 1.2 meters, which is like this high. Uh, and then this number S is the amount of give he has in the landing. So normally if you jump and you land, you allow your knees to bend so that you can move down a little bit. And if you jump off a high surface, you probably have a pretty large value for S. You, it might be 15, 20 centimeters or more. Uh, but in this example, he's just trying to keep his legs stiff and this S value for how much he collapses on the landing is less than a centimeter. Uh, so that's, that's a terrible idea. Don't try this at home. But um, we'll see that that leads to big injury. So part A of the problem, we're going to figure out how fast he's moving when he hits the ground. That's a simple conservation of energy calculation. So part A, he jumps from the window and lands on the ground. And then part B is this landing process where he comes to a stop. So that's from the moment where his feet first touch the ground to the moment where he's completely stopped and he's compressed is moved down by this distance s, which is a small distance in this example. Okay, so let's uh, do these calculations. Part A is pretty simple. Conservation of energy, he's, he's falling, so we've got set up, he starts at rest, jumping out of the window, zero kinetic energy, uh, he ends up at ground level, we'll call that zero potential energy, and that means his speed upon landing is 2gh square root. Okay, now let's consider this landing process. and. I'm going to, now for this second scenario, this part B scenario, I'm going to now move my zero level for potential energy to be um, this picture when he's compressed a little bit. Now this is zero height. And which means that when he first strikes the ground, he's a distance s above the final point. So ground level is s above the zero potential energy level. And in this landing process, the ground exerts a force on him that is a non-conservative force. So we're going to write conservation of energy. with non-conservative force involved. And let's put in these um, formulas. The initial potential energy, like I said, now we're considering uh, the reference point to be 
to be here when it's only compressed. So the initial potential energy is mgs, that tiny little height above where he finishes. And this is one half mv squared, where we use that v value that we just calculated in part a. And we've got this work done by the non-conservative force, which we'll evaluate in a second. PE final is zero, because we're considering this last picture to be zero potential energy. And um, KE final is zero. He's come to a, a stop now in an injured kind of way. So we've got the work done by the non-conservative force of the ground of pushing on this guy's feet and legs equals minus mgs plus one half mv squared. All right, so this work, remember, is force times displacement times cosine of the angle between those vectors. And let's think about what's happening during this landing process. The ground is applying an upward force on the guy. He's moving down by this distance s. So the force vector and the displacement vector are in opposite directions. So we've got the force from the ground times the magnitude of the dis displacement times cosine of the angle between them, 180. So that gives us an, a minus sign. There's a minus sign over here. And with one step of algebra, we get this relationship. Now in, uh, I guess I'll put some numbers in here just so we can talk about it. I'll use the numbers I was given. Your numbers will be a little different. In my example for the mass, I had 68 kilograms. Um, the height was 1.2 meters and the compression distance was 0 0.52 centimeters. And when you plug in all that, you get a force of 1.54 times 10 to the fifth newtons. And in a one of our recent lessons, we were talking about the threshold of forces for, for injuries. I think it was in um, when we were talking about uh, automobile collisions. And this amount of force is uh, enough to break bones. So even though he didn't jump from very high, only maybe this high above the ground, 1.2 meters, that's still enough for his legs or ankles to break because he didn't give any, um, he didn't provide any give when he landed. He landed with straight legs. Uh, now if you're really good at landing, I don't know if you guys have ever watched videos of parkour or free runners, people who do sports like that, they're able to jump from really high heights and land safely without breaking themselves because they can take this number and make it very big. They can spread the landing force out over a large distance. Um, you might see a parkour athlete jump off a building and um, roll on the ground. The reason why they do that is to make this S value as large as possible because when S is big, then this force gets smaller and so they don't break 